Christ as well as our groomsmen and what God wants to represent in the earth with his love. And so God morning to you. Um, I'm not here to excite you, but I am here uh, to release just a, a greater understanding. I should have added her name. I'll have to add it to here once I wrap up. Um, but this message this morning is regarding the Jewish heart and it's regarding the secret of Elul. And um, this piece that I'm going to be reading is actually by Sarah Esther Crispy or Sarah Esther Crisp. And um, I thought that this was a beautiful um, expression of the month of Elul as we're closing it out uh, with regards to the king is in the field. And I wanted to be able to release it this morning. I feel like God wanted us to so that we can process the day before we actually embrace the month of Tishri, which begins tonight at sundown. And so um, those of you, you know, as you understand that with the Hebrew calendar, it always begins at sundown the night before and it's sundown or, you know, night into day, you know, and that is the first day, right? And so um, as I and releasing this is important for us to be able to bring this all together before we walk into the noob as we are ready to cross over. We're transitioning as well as crossing over not only into a new month, but into a new year in Jesus name. I believe God that many of you that it's not just any old year that you're getting ready to embrace and embark upon, but actually you're getting ready to shift into another place in your life where you won't return to the way things were before. And so the Lord would have us as we evaluate certain things in this month. Um, this is a teaching for us to reflect, really reflect before we walk into Rosh Hashanah. Now, I will do another teaching regarding the month of Rosh Hashanah a little later, um, probably this evening, um, just, you know, to embrace what is coming. What is that going to look like for you? What is that going to look like for me? Because this month is going to be huge. Um this year is going to be huge. You know, somebody put that in the chat. This year is going to be huge for me. If you're believing God to step into some things, hallelujah, that are going to be different, more different than they've ever been. This is going to be your new normal, but there is going, like I've just decided that I am coming into a new place in my life, the one that I can embrace and, and all those kind of things, but it starts in the place of self-reflection. So I'm not going to go into all of Rosh Hashanah and what that means, um, but we are coming into the new as well as um, the books are open right now. The books are open. The book of your life is open right now where things are being considered. And so if we know where God is with us, we'll be able to process it a lot differently. So with regards to the Jewish heart and the secret of the month of Elul is love. It's love. It's love. We know that God is love. Listen. And so um, it is the most powerful of human emotions. We all crave it. We cannot live without it. And yet it is so overwhelming. It's so all encompassing that there is no way to measure it. There's no way to prove it, define it, or even describe it. When we speak of the intellect, it is represented by the mind. And when we speak of the emotions specifically of love, they are represented by the heart. But why? When our back is turned, we have no idea of the state of the other. And some of you have felt like, you know, maybe God has turned his back on you um and and so this is for you you know maybe you feel like god turned his back on what he spoke to you what he promised you because it doesn't look like you know what where you are right now and so let me continue the symbol of the heart is probably one of the most well-known symbols especially with all the emojis it's one of the highest used um emojis and so spanning continents cultures religions languages that little red heart that means love it is used to sign letters to represent the word love itself and it has inundated the buyer's market by being plastered on cards t-shirts necklaces you know it's on balloons and just about everything else and how is the image of the heart as we most commonly know it the symbol for this passionate experience of love well the month that we are now in and we're closing as we step into the month of Tishri this evening is the key hallelujah even this month as we're closing out Elul it's 
been the key to unlocking the inner and most potent meaning of the heart, as is well known, the Hebrew letters that make the word Elul, which is Aleph, Lamed, Vav, and Lamed, are an acronym for the phrase from the biblical Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, which is chapter number six, verse three. Ani, Lodoti, Vilodi, uh, excuse me, let me say that again. Ani, Lodoti, Vidoti, Li, which means I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine. And this beautiful and romantic phrase is that which represents our relationship with our creator, which is often paralleled to that of a husband and wife, a bride and a groom in our individual lives. We're going somewhere. Now, the Zohar explains that at the beginning of the month of Elul, we are um, a core el core, which means that we are back to back. And by the end of Elul, which is where we now are, we are panim. We are el panim el panim, which means face to face. Have you ever felt like you were back to back with the Lord, only to find that, you know, really at the end of the day, you were face to face with him? Like there was a turn, there was a turn. And I prophesy now in the name of Jesus that some of you who have felt like your back was against the wall, your back was to the Lord's. You know, you don't know what he's going, you don't know what's going on, but you are getting ready to come face to face in Jesus name. Now, it, the, what, what the, uh, what the article represents, it says, how can it be that we are back to back? Wouldn't that imply that God has his back turned to us as well? How can we say something like that, though, when this is the month in which, as Chastic Master Rabbi uh, Shanur Zalman of Liadi teaches that the king is in the field, is it not the month when God is more accessible than ever? And many of you have heard me um, speak about the king is in the field and, you know, God is so accessible. He's right next to his people. And we know in Rosh Hashanah, we're preparing for um, the entrance of the high holy days. Then we go into the days of awe. Then we go into Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Then we're going into the feast of weeks, you know, and the king is busy. He's getting things done. But right now he has been available to you and me. And he still is while the books are open before us and it's so close. And so when he is so close and he is waiting for us to greet him, when he is there for us in the field of our everyday lives. And again, the Lord is looking looking to have that kind of encounter with you every day, that Eden experience that is readily available for you every day, where he is looking to walk with you and talk with you, where he is looking to lead you and guide you. And Holy Spirit is living to live on, looking to live on the inside of you to be able to order your every step so that, I mean, can you imagine, you know, never having to worry about, you know, did you error? Did you get it wrong or anything like that? Because God has ordered every single one of your steps because you allow him to live on the inside of you. Listen, the fact that we are described as back to back and then face to face is an incredible lesson. Often when we feel angry or hurt or abandoned, whatever the root of our pain may be, we turn our back. You know, that's how humans as we are, we fight or flight, you know, um, we respond to two things and it's either pain or pleasure. And many of you can attest to that. And so when our back is turned, we have no idea of the state of the other. And some of you are in a place where you are, feel like you're back to back with those that you love, even those of you who are in, who are married right now. And so when you think of that, and you have no state of the other person, it's often easier to believe that we are not the only one with a turn back. So if I have my back turned to you, you know, I, I don't know what you're doing. And a lot of times I might assume that your back is turned to me, but that's not even the case. It's easier to think that they turned around. That is the other, that the other isn't facing us at all. Because if that's the case, even when we turn around, it won't help. So why bother? And some of you have felt like that in your life. You know, you know, why even bother? Because, you know, you assume that because your back has been turned, their back must be turned. And even when you turn around, maybe because your back was turned, Maybe, you know, for a moment, they look the other way. And so why not? Why make that first move only to turn around and see the back of the other one? But this rationalization is the cause of many unsettled arguments, which was a purpose also of this month of uh, Elul, which is the purpose of what why we are 
closing this out this way this month. That way, if there's anything that is unresolved in your life, anything that is unsettled in your life, you can take this opportunity to make those things right. So this rationalization that's the cause of many unsettled arguments, hurt feelings, and broken relationships, how classic is the scene? You've seen it played out endlessly in movies of the couple who walk away from one another and at some point, you know, the man turns around and um, wanting to call her name and ask for her another chance and beg for forgiveness. And he's about to speak that, but he realizes her back is turned. And so she's walking away and he tells himself that it's too late. She just doesn't care. So he turns back around only to find that seconds later, she turns and she to look at him and she doesn't want this to end. She wants to say something, but can't garner the courage. She doesn't have the strength. And why, why, why should she, when his back is turned, but the month of Elul right now, it teaches us the necessity of being willing to turn around whatever is gone on in your life or whatever doubts that you've experienced or felt. This is a divine opportunity. What for you to turn around for God to turn things around, even in you first, and then also in your life. And she looks at him longingly, but it just doesn't matter. She's assuming uh, um, he doesn't, and he couldn't care less as he continues to walk away from her. And we, the viewers, sit on edge of our seats, hoping that maybe they will continue. They will both turn around at the same second, that they will finally realize that the other does care. And that even though they appear to be back to back, they really want to be face to face. And sometimes that fairy tale ending does happen. Other times they simply continue to walk in opposite directions right out of each other's lives. And may that not be you in Jesus name. Listen, um, and so we find here that in and it is this month of Elul that teaches us the necessity of being willing to turn around. The king is in the field. Our creator is there. And no matter how we may feel, he has never had his back turned at all. All we need to do is turn ourselves around to realize that he is there and waiting for you, waiting for me, waiting for us. The back to back that we experience in the beginning of the month is based on our misperceptions. Listen, and there are so many things that may be going on in your life and literally it's just a misperception. It's your idea. It's your fear. It's your assumptions. And only when we turn around do we realize the truth, the inner essence, and then we are face to face, which does not only mean that we can finally look at each other, but more so that we can look in each other. For the root of the word for face, panim, is the same as panimu, which means innerness. God is looking at the innerness. Man may look at the outward appearance, but it is God that looks upon the heart. And I believe right now now in the name of Jesus. that, And I feel this so strongly that some of you, this has to also do with some relationships that you have. And so as I did on the teaching at the beginning of the month, that this time is an opportunity for us to look at our relationships. And even during these next 10 days, the 10 days of awe, it is a time that while the books are open and before the, the books or the, your fate, so to speak, for this next year has been sealed for you to make amends with other people. Listen, and so this is a divine opportunity for you to set those wrongs right. In Mark chapter number 11, you know, before it talks, it says, have faith in God. And then it talks about being able to say to this moment, mountain, be thou removed, uh, you know, and be thou cast in the sea and it has to move from here to there. But God says, you know, if you have ought against any, you know, don't think I'm going to hear you at all. I need you to lay your offering down, lay your sacrifice and put it down. And I want you to go and make that right. And if you can't do it, just you take somebody with you. And I believe God is looking for us to make amends for some things. This is the time for you to turn around and get it right. I believe God that divine restoration is your portion as you're coming into this as well in Jesus name for those of you that this word is for and he's looking for you to put the pride aside and be humble hallelujah in Jesus name so God can be glorified he is looking at your innerness he is looking at your heart and there are some of you that may be challenged over the next few days to go ahead and take care of some things and this is also a reflection of your relationship with our father so now the question is how this lesson is taught to us not only in the month of Elul but through the name Elul 
Elul itself. A Hebrew name is not a mere way of referring to something, but actually represents its soul. The Chazidah teaches that every parent is gifted with divine inspiration when he or she names a child. It is the name that represents the deepest aspects of this person. And the Kabbalah and the Chazidah teach that to uncover the essential meaning. Listen, of a Hebrew word, we need to analyze the letters that comprise it, their numerical value, their form, and their meaning. And so as said above, the word Elul is comprised of an Aleph, followed by a Lamed, followed by a Vav, and then followed by the final letter, another Lamed. The first letter in Elul is also the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The letter Aleph is numerically equivalent to one, which represents the idea of God's total unity. Listen, beloved, if you have been believing God for unity. God is trying to show you a reflection of his heart as well as unity in this hour in Jesus name. And so as I'm releasing this teaching, I believe that God is going to unlock for you divine revelation, divine understanding, divine clarity. Some of you have been processing certain things and you don't even know how things are getting ready to shift and change. But even as we are releasing this, this is going to unlock some things for you and unlock some things in your life. So listen, now we must answer how all of this is related to the heart. And here is where our Lameds are once again defined. At this point, it is important to think again about the symbol of the heart and to question even its origin. And so it should come as no surprise that the meaning of the symbol will once again be found in the word for heart itself. In Hebrew, the word for heart is lev, which is spelled lamid be it. And so Rabbi Abraham of in the year 1291 wrote a manuscript by the name of Emri Schieffer in which he defines the meaning of the heart. And so in this, uh, Rabbi Abalafia teaches that the word lev, lamid, be it, needs to be understood as two lamids. This is because the letter be it is the second letter in the alphabet and is numerically equivalent to two. Let me look at this again. Isn't it, When you begin to unlock this and look at it as the beauty, which is why it is possible for two to become one, for two to become one, God is looking to live on the inside of you, which is this is also a reflection of how God will take a man and a woman and the two become one. Hallelujah, that unity, that one flesh as well. You know, they are able to be two, two whole individuals, but they also come together as one. Let me continue. So he explains that the word needs to be read and understood as two Lameds, but it's not enough to have two Lameds. As Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg explains that in order for there to be a relationship, the two Lameds must be connected. Listen, God is looking to be connected to you. And he's also looking for you to be connected. For those of you who are married, those of you who are believing God for divine marriage, listen, also for you to be connected. God is looking to unify some things. God is looking to restore some things. Let me continue. And so they need to be face to face. This is a reflection as those of you, as you can look at, you know, at um, a marriage, but also God's marriage to you and to me as we are the bride of Christ. And so in order for these uh, Lameds to, uh, to be connected, they have to be face to face. And so listen, if you have an L here and an L here, they have to be face to face. If you turn them around, there's no heart at all, but the connection is in them being turned one towards another in Jesus name. And so in them being face to face, when we turn around the second Lamed to face the first, we form the image of the Jewish heart as seen even um, that we see every day. And so while the heart as we are used to seeing it is quite clear in this form, an entirely new part of the heart is also revealed in their coming together. So the heart and the love it represents can thrive, flourish only when there is totality in connection. And our Father is looking to be in total connection with you as well. Blessings to you, Lady Lawanda, and thank you for being on both platforms sharing as well. And so because the letter Lamed is the tallest of all the letters, listen, you know, so the letter Lamed, the L, is taller than all the letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The reason is because the Lamed represents the concept of breaking out of boundaries. This is a time where God is looking for 
you to break out of boundaries, for you to come out of, you know, your little box, for you to come out of, I've drawn a line in the sand and that is it. You know, I'm not going no further, but God is looking for us to cross over boundaries because he was willing to break boundaries for you and for me. That is the picture of Jesus coming down and the even the, the, the veil was rent. It was torn from the top to the bottom, hallelujah, so that he could get to us and giving us full access to him in Jesus' name. It's one of going beyond your potential uh, of entering the the super conscious from the conscious. God is looking, hallelujah, for you even to go beyond your potential in this hour for you to unlock this so that you can walk into the greatest expression of yourself because you are with him and love and has no bounds in you. And that perfect love with the Lord, it casts out all fear because fear has torment and it brings you into this place when you are really, when you realize you're fully loved by him and there's no limit for you. Listen, you are able to do anything. There is no stopping you. Ain't no stopping us now. You're on the move. Listen, this is an opportunity, hallelujah, for you to take and for him to take your natural and cause it to move in such a supernatural way in Jesus' name. Blessings to you, Lady Renee. And so the Lamed also means two things simultaneously. It means both to learn and to teach. Listen, many of you will encounter certain things where God is going to cause you to bless me. So while you are learning, for you to also be teaching. And for while you are teaching, for you also to be learning, which shows us that the two are intertwined and they're both are essential. And so in a relationship, I must be willing to learn from the other. And so thereby making myself a receiver, yet the other person must also be able to learn from me. Listen, and so which makes me the teacher, the giver. God is looking for us to have this giver and receiver relationship with him. Hallelujah. He has given us so many things, but he is also looking for us to give back unto him, the give and to receive. Listen, furthermore, the image of the Lamed can be broken down into three other letters. The top part of the letter is that of a Yud, which is the smallest of the Hebrew letters, and that letter represents the head. The head contains the mind, the intellect, and also what? The face. Listen, so the next letter in Elul is a Vav, and in Hebrew, the Vav serves as a conjunctive and an and. And so when I was reading this, and it began to unlock different things for me, because, you know, when you love God, even in the word of the Lord, it says, love God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul. God is looking for us to love him with everything that we have in us, in Jesus' name. And so, and with that, and it, and it is very reciprocal, and that at the same time, it's unconditional without limits. It doesn't mean that my 50 is going to match your 50 today. It may mean that I'm going 99 and you only can go the one. We know that Jesus left the 99 for the one. And so he's willing to go the distance. And in our relationships, there are times where it is not equal, but it shouldn't be lopsided all the time, right? And so listen, as we're loving with our mind, our soul, and, and our heart, with everything that is in us, and even in our intellect and, and with our face. And so uh, this next letter that serves as a conjunctive or an and, it also means a hook. Listen, and in its form, it looks like a hook. So in this case, the vav is the hook, which is connecting the yud, the mind, with the bottom letter, the chaff. And I just believe that God is looking to not only link you and I to him and he to us, but there are some relationships that God is looking the hook, hook, line, and sinker, I'm trying to tell you. And so that hook, even as we look at its expression from the bottom letter and from the chaff, it represents the body. So physically speaking, it symbolizes the neck, which transports the flow of the blood from the brain to the heart. And I'm getting ready to close. Listen, so this teaches us that the heart, that the love that it represents, it can thrive, it can flourish only when there is totality in connection. That is the only means and the ability for it to flow the way it needs to. Listen, and so for those of you who may be having some experiences um, or relationships that are not mended right now, or there's been any issues, there must be 
totality in your connection. It can't be broken. It can't have limits. You know what I mean? Um, it must be total. And so the Jewish heart, true love represents a mind to mind, a face to face, a eye to eye, body to body, soul to soul connection. And so what was amazing to me, even with that and understanding that we remember that when the prophet Elijah went to go in to the boy who had died, um, actually, it, I believe it was uh, the prophet Elisha, when he went into the boy, he laid himself on him. He laid, and when he laid himself on him, he laid himself what? Eye to eye, body to body, fully. It was totality, totality in connection. And so when he did that, the boy began to sneeze. Listen, there are some things when you connect in your totality that God is going to cause it to come back to life. Hallelujah. I prophesy divine resurrection and divine restoration, even in relationships that are kingdom. In the name of Jesus, there will not be any pride that is in the way, but God is going to cause you all to come together face to face, totality and connection. So the Bob, the connection between the head and the heart must always stay healthy. Listen, let me say this to, as well. There are some of you who feel like, you know, with God, there's been a break in your relationship. There's been a break even your with your connection with the Lord. And he is looking for you to return in your totality to make total connection with him, even with, with your face to face, you know, behold, I see you, you see me eye to eye. I'm looking at you. I see what you see. And I see it through your eyes, through your perspective. Imagine how many of our relationships would be different if we both were able to see things from each other's perspective. Hello, listen, body to body with everything I am. Father, I am connected to you and soul to soul. My mind, my will, and my emotions are lined up with the Lord. And I believe that when we do this, you'll experience such an amazing um, new level and, and of relationship and language with the Lord. You'll experience such a new encounter with him. And that is what he is desiring to have with you as we embark upon these high holy days and this time that is getting ready to seal what your next year is getting ready to look like. And this next year, every day is building upon one another, which is preparing you, which is propelling you, which is already set in motion the things that you can expect even upon this decade that we are in now. And God says it must be through totality in connection with you. And so the connection between the head and the heart, the mind and the heart, it must always stay healthy with a clear flow. If anything cuts it off, the relationship cannot continue. So as we all know, one of the quickest ways to kill a person is to slit right across the neck. And, you know, and I hate to be gruesome. That's in the article here. Um, and, and it's, says the neck is our lifeline. It ensures that our head, our intellect rules above our emotions and that there is a healthy interchange between the mind and the heart. And some of us have experienced issues in our relationships. We're experienced because why? Because we, we've been too ruled by our emotions and not allowing the mind and the emotion for the, and the heart to be able to flow together as one. Listen, and some of you, you know, they say that, you know, a man is the head, you know, he's the king, he is the head, but the queen is the one who is able to turn his head, right, you know, as the neck, you know, and so and some of you feel like, you know, it's been cut. It's been taken from you. Listen, it's been cut off, but the Lord is saying, I have the ability to restore. First, you must come to me. Let me continue. Listen, as the neck is our lifeline, it ensures that our head rules above our emotions, our intellect rules above our emotions, and that there's the healthy interchange between the mind and the heart, the heart that we are all familiar with, the symbol that represents love throughout the world, lacks the blood and the Bob, it is missing the mind and the neck. And so the popular symbol represents only the physical connection between bodies. Listen, and even that is a picture of how you can have physical interaction with somebody. But if you don't have, listen, the mind and the neck, if you don't have, you know, the connection between the, the flow between the mind and the heart, listen, if you are missing and you only have a physical connection, you don't have much at all. And so this this is why 
and how Elul is the month that begins back to back and ends face to face because some of you has just had what feels like a physical connection with the Lord. You've gone to church and maybe you shouted a little bit, but then there's not this deep intimacy with him. You know that even when things are difficult, there is an unconditional love where there are no barriers, where there are no limits. And the Lord is looking to have that with you. He's looking to have that with me, right? And so as we have this intimacy where we're fully connected to him, we see things the way he does. He is expressing things. We're able to finish his sentences. Why? Because we are able to think alike. I walk like him. I talk like him. I love him. I spend so much time with him. He is looking to have that full connection with you and that full connection with me. And so at the beginning of the month, we are unaware of the reality that I am my beloved. I am to my beloved and my beloved is to me. However, by working on ourselves during this month, and I believe that many of you have, we've been releasing those words, those daddy daughter talks, those very personal things. And so by uh, working on ourselves and by re receiving this connection, by being willing to turn around and make the changes that have been necessary, we come to realize that our creator has never had his back turned. He has always been facing us and just waiting for us to turn around. And once we do, we are then like two laments that are face to face, which form the Jewish heart, which are the essence of the month of Elul. As we are closing out this month, it is my prayer that you realize, that you recognize that your love, the God of love loves you so much that he, he sticks closer than a brother, that when you were without perfection. Listen, when you were yet ungodly, Christ died for you because of his love for you. And when you realize and you experience the love of the Father, you realize that there's nothing that can't be done. And those lies that the enemy has been trying to tell you, you won't believe them because you'll know that God loves you too much. It's not in his nature to do some of the things that the enemy is trying to tell you, like God is an Indian giver. You know, and I hate to use that expression, but it's one that will make sense to you. And so God is not one that's going to take things away or turn things around, but he is looking to have this encounter with you. And he is looking for you to know him and to trust him and to love him. And when everything that you do comes out of a place of love, uh, not just because I love him, but I love him because he first loved me when I didn't know to do right. He put his sign, seal, deliver. He put his stamp on you. He sealed us. Hallelujah. Even through the sacrifice of his son and the stealing of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And when we realize that God's love has no limits, you'll walk every day differently that you have been. You won't walk in fear. You won't walk in a place having your head held down because you know that God is love and he loves you and he would do anything for you. And so anything that you may encounter, you look at it differently. God, what are you trying to show me? Because this must, I mean, at the end of the day, it has to work for me. And I believe God that he is working some things for you. You may not have understood them. Some of you, you may have allowed doubt to step and creep in and say, you know, another, um, give you another rendition of the story. But the Lord is saying, I want you to press into my love. I want you to understand my love. I want you to come closer to me than you've ever come and watch what I do with you. Watch uh, what kind of life you walk into because you'll be able to know and believe that it is actually possible for you. You won't limit yourself because you know that I have not limited you. In closing, it says he's always been facing us and just waiting for us to turn around. Once we do, we are then like the two Lameds again that are face to face, which form the Jewish heart and which are the essence of this month that we are now closing, the month of Elul. Elul then must be understood as an Aleph representing God, following a Lamed, a Vav, a Lamed, a Lamed that is connected to the other Lamed. And the Jewish heart, this idea of love as a totality of connection is not merely the work for the month of Elul, but it, it is the entire process of our creation. This Jewish heart is a symbol for why we were created and what we are meant to accomplish. Listen, it all begins and the whole reason for it all, and it ends with love and in love and God's love for us. 
for the Torah is the blueprint of creation and the guidebook of how we connect to the divine. And it is not a book that has a beginning, middle, and end, but rather a scroll. And since we are taught that the end is wedged in the beginning and the beginning in the end, it's all in one another. So what do we find when the Torah scrolls and rolls into the beginning, which is where we are now? The month of Elul is the 12th month, and we are coming into the month of Tishri, which is the first month. It's the end that is coming into the new beginning. Many of you have felt like it's the end of something. Oh, no, it's the end. Is it over? No, it's just coming into its new beginning. And it's all intertwined, beloved, in Jesus' name. Even for when Jesus was on the cross and he said, for it is finished what he had been called to do was finished but it was able to release the next era the next stage the next phase of what was to come beloved i prophesy now in the name of jesus that you are getting ready to enter in as this is closing something new is beginning and as you are entering in in the name of jesus you're getting ready to encounter a new era a new phase a new stage of everything as we are settling into the release of the new in jesus name and so how does the torah end in begin the last word of the Torah is Yisrael Israel which ends with the letter again Lamed and the first word is Bereshit which means in the beginning which begins with a bit here we go again when we join the first and last letters of the Torah we have left the Hebrew word for heart it's all about love it's always been about love this is an opportunity for us to just realize the extent of that love and walk in the knowingness that God loves you and loves me each and every day listen and that allows us to be able to accomplish things that we have not been before because we didn't do it from a place of, of security many of us have grown up in a place of either obscurity or a place of um of obligation and God wants to process you anew and have you look at everything so much differently and, you know, finally deal with that orphan spirit to deliver you from it in the name of Jesus. Listen, and even with that, as we look at that, the Torah being the blueprint of creation and the guidebook of how we connect to the divine, it's not just an ending. It's a beginning that is wedged in it. And I believe, God, that is what you are walking into as well in Jesus' name. This heart, as we connect, when we join the first and last letters of the Torah, and we look at the Lev, and we have the Hebrew word for heart, it is my prayer that we be blessed. According even to this, it says, may we be blessed with the ability to tap into the powers of the month of Elul, to recognize, to reveal our ability to both learn and teach, and through that to come face to face with ourselves, with our loved ones, and with our creator as we are taught through the Jewish heart, the Jewish heart of seeing things. And again, this was by Sarah Esther Chris. And so I just wanted to release that. So as you are going throughout your day, for you to reflect, to position you, to position me for what God is causing to come to an ending, but to be released into our new beginnings. Many of you have been believing God for a lot of different things. And it it's not that he doesn't want to do it. You just won't walk into it without the believing ability that he wants it for you in Jesus name. So some of you have not gone after things that God has for you because you have felt like either you weren't good enough, you didn't deserve it, or, you know, you have a misperception. And it's not about you. It's about God's love for you and what he wants to do through you. And so as we are searching through the inside, we're also not hung up on ourselves. And we realize that God looks at your heart and really his love for you is greater than you could ever imagine. And it's not as bad as the enemy would try to lie to you in Jesus name. So go through this day, reflect upon the heart, ask the Lord to show you anything else that may be in your heart. And what things, um, and even your perception of how you view him for what he would desire to do and release in your life as well. Listen, beloved, I just thank God for those of you who are here. We are going to come back on a little later um, this evening and release the word of the Lord concerning Rosh Hashanah with a little bit of teaching as well, because I believe that if we get it here, we'll be able to walk it out in every area of our lives. So blessings unto you. Listen, shalom, shalom, God's peace to you. Those of you on every platform and every replay viewer and Jesus. 
Jesus name. So Father, I thank you for every vessel who is here. I thank you for those who will listen to this on the replay. Father, I thank you right now for your goodness and your love. I thank you, Father, that you are challenging us to see you in a different way, in a bold way. Father, I thank you right now that you're causing us to realize that your back was never turned towards us. We made some assumption because we had walked out or because there was a blockage. And so, Father, we are turned to you. We are looking to you. You are where our help comes from. And so I thank you, Father, that you will release unto us and for us and with us the things that you desired us to see and and the ways in which you desired for us to see them so that we can walk into everything that you have for us even now. In the name of Jesus, I believe you, Father, that this year is going to be revolutionary. I believe, Father, that this year is a setup for what everything that is to come. I believe you, Father, that even as we cross over, we're never going to go back to the way things were in Jesus' name. Even as we understand that Jesus, when you died on the cross, it was done. It was finished even, even before the foundation of the world. But even in that moment, there was not another dying. There was not another crossing over. There was not another uh, need to burn another animal on the altar because you, you have been the great sacrifice and you did it once and for all in Jesus name. And beloved, there are going to be some things in your life where it is a once and for all. It's a done deal. Listen, there are some places and some things that you have experienced and you won't don't have to experience them again because the of the thing and the beginning of another I prophesy in the name of Jesus that many of you you are coming into divine restoration of some relationships because you will lay aside the pride and you'll be able to come face to face God is going to cause you to look at things with a whole new understanding and a whole new belief listen and it will be through the eyes of love and God is being love and also divine restoration reconciliation I prophesy that it be your portion according to the will of the Lord and Jesus name, I decree and declare that as you become one with the Lord, you're going to be able to see things differently in every area. And you're going to be able to walk in the newness of that because steps that you were needed, you're going to begin to lay hold of them in Jesus name. And no flesh is going to glory in the sight of the Lord in Jesus name. I prophesy now in the name of Jesus that as you reflect, you will not be one who is burdened up by this condemnation. The devil is a liar, but you will be able to make peace and make amends with certain things in your life so that you can go forward. So you can go forward. God is desiring, desiring that you move forward in the name of Jesus. And so right now, Father, I thank you that through this reflection and as we become unified, the more with you in Jesus name, that we are unified with those that you have connected to us and with us in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah for divine reconciliation. I hear that so strongly divine restoration. I hear that so strongly there shall be no pride that glories in the sight of the Lord. I thank you, Father, for every supernatural shift. I thank you, Father, for tra divine transition. I thank you, Father, for the crossing over in the name of Jesus, crossing over and coming out. Father, I thank you right now that you're causing it to be done in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, hallelujah, that the Jewish heart, Father, you allowed Jesus. Jesus went first and Jesus is going ahead of you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Angels are going ahead of you to be able to begin even the process of restoration and reconciliation as it was so intended by the Father and so desired as well in Jesus' name. Father, I ask those of you who desire, you maybe you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the Lord like that. And you desire to come into a new, a fresh relationship with the Lord. I challenge you to repeat after me. Father, I thank you for all that you've done. I believe that Jesus is Lord and I confess that Jesus is Lord over my life. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And on the third day that God rose him from the dead for me, listen, and I confess even now that Jesus, you are the Lord of my life, the head of my life. And may I always walk with you continuously. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit would go in to your people even now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That you would be able to live in our vessels. Hallelujah. And that you would be able to lead us and guide us into all truth. That you would begin to show us things. That you would begin to express your love upon us like 
we had not even imagined before that we could not even even comprehend but our comprehension is not totally necessary for us to walk in the fullness of you and so father i thank you for doing it i thank you for shifting it i thank you for moving it hallelujah and there shall be no limit to you there's no limit of you no limit among you but you shall see the goodness of the lord even while you are in the land of the living and walk like you have never walked before in the name of jesus hallelujah you are getting ready to experience the divine encounters of almighty god in jesus name and i thank you for the supernatural thank you for putting the super on our natural father i thank you that our lives hallelujah uh, and, and miracle signs and wonders shall follow those that believe we shall experience some of you hallelujah what would be a miracle to you you shall experience it hallelujah signs of god and the wonders of god shall be fulfilled in your life father i thank you that you are getting ready to blow the minds of your people and i give you glory for it now in the name of jesus hallelujah no good thing will you withhold from those that love you in jesus name according to your word i thank you that you've given us everything that pertaineth to life and godliness in the name of jesus i thank you hallelujah that you have given us these exceeding precious promises in the name of jesus already i thank you father hallelujah that even in your word first corinthians 2 and 9 Bless me that says that eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And we love you, Lord. And we're getting ready to experience the unimaginable, the unbelievable, even in our life in such greater degree in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy, I release, I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes, it is a Lashana Tova to you. Much love to you. And thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Abernathy, uh, for your heart and your love and even the preparation of this. God bless you all. I'm so grateful for those of you who are here. And I'm so grateful for what God is getting ready to do in your life. And I'm so thankful in advance for every testimony that is getting ready to take place. Things are getting ready to happen in an accelerated measure. But take this time to reflect so that you can maximize this, uh, this next phase that you are coming into in Jesus' name. Because so much of it, you're going to realize it's possibility because it's based in your revelation of the father's heart and the father's love towards you in Jesus name, because you will no longer hold you back because you will realize that it all comes from the love of our father that is inside of you, that is inside of me in Jesus name. So therefore nothing shall be impossible to you in Jesus name. Nothing that you're believing for shall be impossible for you, but you shall walk into it. You shall live in it in Jesus name. Beloved, I love you. Have an incredible day. We will come together again very, very soon. In Jesus name, you all be blessed in the name of the Lord.